and welcome to worship here at Chisago Lake Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Taryn Montgomery, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for worship. Today is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, and we continue to hear these parables of Jesus, a reminder of that mustard seed and just that little bit of faith for which God can still move mountains and grow big things, abundance in our lives and in our relationships and even in this odd, weird odd, awkward, did I say that already? Time. Uh, God is at work, absolutely. A couple of announcements as we start our service. You'll notice in the slides to come, there are some things happening around here. Uh, we have started a bi-weekly communion and prayer out in the upper parking lot. We had our first one this past week, and we will continue to do that every other Wednesday uh, for the time being. We'll reevaluate as fall approaches. Also, we have our fundraising appeal, uh, be a superhero to help out our local school district and the $10,000 uh, debt that they have incurred from uh, forgiving the unpaid school lunches um, back in March. Uh, a gift of grace on behalf of our school district for those families in need and Mishi Lu and our area churches want to step up and help where we can. And of course, support the potty. Another uh, fanciful thing we get to do here in this time of not a lot of activity in the building is to put in an ADA family restroom here on the main level when you walk in right by the sanctuary that is accessible to any and all who need it uh, on this level. And so we're really glad to see that happen later this summer, hopefully uh, late August, we'll get started on that, if not earlier. So you're welcome to give. Our goal as a congregation is $15,000, all of which will be matched uh, by the 3M committee as well as by council. So we're so glad for your presence with us today in worship. Welcome wherever you are, wherever you're coming from, whether it's Sunday morning or Friday night when you're watching this, we are glad you are here and you are participating in what God is up to. Where I die My Lord with Crucified Gifted high It's my kingdom's fall Once and for Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. So by your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace through God, through Jesus Christ though who we have obtained grace upon grace, and our sins are forgiven. So let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into the kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Here ends the reading. Good morning, children. Look where we are back today. We are back in our sanctuary. I haven't been in here to tape in a really long time. Today, I brought with me a couple things to show you. First of all, I brought some seeds. If you look, you can see these are pretty tiny seeds. Jesus talked about these seeds. They are mustard seeds. The other thing I brought was another thing Jesus was talking about in today's Bible story, yeast. Also super duper tiny when it starts out. Well, what do you think we can learn today about mustard seeds and yeast? Well, Jesus used both of them to describe the kingdom of heaven. In fact, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. Well, what do you think we can learn from the mustard seed? Even though it is small, it is important in, it is an important plant and can be helpful for birds and other animals and gives us a nice spicy mustard. So we can learn that even though, no matter how small we are, so even you little youngest of kids, Oh, you're not big. You are important in God's kingdom. We all are important in God's kingdom. All right, how about yeast? How about my yeast? You guys know what yeast does? If you add it to a little flour and sugar and water and a little salt, it will make you a really nice, fluffy, yummy piece of loaf of bread. Um, the flour, the water, the salt, they can't do it alone. It needs the yeast. The yeast mixes all throughout the bread and makes it rise up into a big bubble. If you've ever made bread, you know it. Start with the dough and then it gets bigger and then you punch it down and then it gets bigger and bigger and yummy and there's nothing like fresh bread. It is so yummy. What do you think we can learn from this yeast? Well, talking about the kingdom of heaven, 
Jesus used the yeast, describe, the yeast to describe the kingdom of heaven is like the yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened, which means until it all grew. Well, gee, that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to be like yeast in the kingdom of God, to help this little tiny bit to grow throughout the kingdom of God. Now, when Jesus' ministry was started, it was pretty small. Jesus picked 12 disciples, and that's it. And then all of a sudden, he had crowds of people following him around in Galilee. And then, not too long after Jesus' death, the disciples spread out, and the, our, the Christian faith spread throughout the world so that it is all over the entire world now. There are Christians everywhere. So just like the yeast that gets in mixed in the flour, it spreads throughout the world. And Jesus wants us to spread the love of Jesus to other people, just like the yeast. We can help it grow. So we may be small, like the mustard seed, but we can grow. Jesus will take our faith and make it grow into a big tree. And just like the yeast, our love we can share the love of Jesus throughout everywhere we go. So, pray with me now. Dear God, help us to remember that the size is not important in your kingdom. Even the smallest one of us can help to grow the kingdom and bring change to the world around us. And all God's children said, Amen. Have a great week. This gospel is a bit of a doozy. I mean, if you take a really good look at it, it almost seems like Jesus is kind of emotionally unstable as he tells his followers what the kingdom of God is like with the use of all these different parables. He jumps from one illustration to the next. He almost seems indecisive on exactly what this kingdom looks like. First, he says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It's small, but it grows into the greatest of shrubs. No, but wait, the kingdom of God, he says, is like a woman who takes yeast and she mixes it with the flour until it's leavened. And then the kingdom of God is a treasure that's been hidden in the field. When a guy finds it, he's so excited, he sells everything that he has so he can buy that field. Or the kingdom of God is like a merchant who searches for the finest pearl. And when he finds it, he sells everything that he has so he can go and buy it. Oh, but no, wait, says Jesus, the kingdom of God is like a net. When thrown into the sea, it is stocked full of every fish of various kinds. And when they bring it back to shore, they throw it out and they separate the good from the bad. Oh, and by the way, at the very end of the age, the angels will come. They'll also separate the good from the bad. There'll be a fiery furnace. There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <gasps> Got it? Oh my goodness, Jesus, you're overwhelming me. But the thing that's kind of lost is that there's also some surprises in this text. Think about this for a second. The mustard bush that he speaks of is not a great tree. The woman who's baking leavened bread, well, that would have been non-religious bread. Why would she do that? The treasure, the pearl, calls for our total commitment. There is no room for hesitation. The net includes both eatable or edible fish and throwaway fish, like trash. So the kingdom of God is like, what, Jesus? Many Christians would take this text and have over the years, and they focus so much on that last line about the weeping and gnashing of teeth and the fiery furnace and all this imagery of the apocalypse and the end times, and they literally translate or take these words to mean that if we don't follow Jesus exactly this way and exactly this method, we're gonna meet the same end. But I think in that translation or interpretation, they, many of us are missing the very point that these parables are pointing at. That the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is messy and is full of surprises. And in this 
gospel today. Jesus is using the art of simile to paint a portrait of how beautifully complex and cluttered and not neat the kingdom of God actually is. Jesus is not being indecisive or unstable. He's pointing to the truth of the matter. The truth, for example, that mustard seed is not going to grow into a tree. It's not. Mustard plants are not stately. They're not finely trimmed, well-maintained, long towering trees, but they grow wild, kind of like this big abnormous bush behind me. They grow wild and they're ill-mannered and they're bushy and they're homely and no one in their right mind is gonna go plant a mustard seed bush in their landscaping. It would be unsightly. You can bet the neighbors are going to balk and talk about you all over town. A big boisterous bush is not the problem, says Jesus, because he's not interested in sturdy trunks and stunning buds or well-behaved branches. Remember, Jesus is not a farmer or a gardener, as we learned in the last couple of Sundays and those gospel parables. But what impresses upon Jesus the most is that shrub, that mustard plant, grows and grows and grows and grows and grows without end. It does not stop. It never gives up. It is unrelenting in its perseverance. By all appearances, we may think that mustard plant has no value, but little do we know how great a plant it actually is an illustration of God's kingdom love. There's a woman in a congregation that I'm aware of who suffers from multiple sclerosis. Years before her diagnosis, she lived a very active life. She was busy hiking and biking and camping and backpacking. She loved to be outdoors. But once her diagnosis became real, pretty soon thereafter, she depended on a wheelchair for any kind of transportation. Many days, she wasn't even able to leave the house. She still isn't. But every single day, she writes letters and notes and cards to family, to friends, to loved ones. She does this every single day. She writes letters to her elected officials, urging them to work for peace and justice and care of God's creation, urging them to show compassion upon the least of these as her interpretation of God's gospel suggests. Every single day, she sends birthday cards to people in her congregation, prayer cards to those that she is praying for, just letting them know that that very morning, she said a prayer for them every single day. She never relents. She never gives up. Her hand painfully moving that pen along the paper's edge, she growing God's kingdom love, one card, one stamp at a time. Nothing can stop the abundance of her reach. You see, God often surprises us. At first glance, that huge, indecisive, little too extreme something story Jesus has to share might not seem all that important. It's a little over the top. But at second look, we see that Jesus is moving our eye farther to the kind of kingdom that God desires for us, within us. The kind of kingdom that uses a sower of seeds, a woman baking bread, a fortune seeker, a merchant, a commercial fisher, a woman frail with multiple sclerosis to demonstrate God's abundant, growing without stop, persistent, messy, unabashed, tangled up kind of love for all of creation. In the form of that tiny, tiny, mustard seed. Who would have thought? Amen.
from our many locations, yet held in one body by the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For the church, O God of mercy, we pray. Open your word to Christians around the world. Reveal yourself to us in ways both traditional and surprising, in places old and new. Bless our bishops, pastors, and other church leaders as they face the challenging tasks regarding a decision surrounding COVID-19. For the nations, O oh God of justice, we pray. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other, to resist the ways of violence, stifle the lust for conquest, bring peace to the Middle East, walk alongside the people in Portland, move us away from racist attitudes and policies. Help our president, governor, and legislators to speak with honesty, to strive for justice, and to work to alleviate the nation's needs. For our children, youth, and parents, O oh God of grace, we pray. Give the youth an inspiring dream of what their future might be. Give them patience to await a time of safety. Give parents peace as they await the decision from school districts regarding the opening of schools. Direct all schools from daycare through graduate schools to make the hard decisions as they lead us through this time. For all those in need, O oh God, we pray. Heal the sick, feed the hungry, house the refugee, comfort the countless thousands who are declining, who are dealing with the coronavirus. Accompany those living with anxiety and despair. Form us to be your arms of mercy. Remember before you those we name here now. We pray especially for Duane, Judy, Christoph, Stacy, Nancy, Mary, Eileen, Vida, Larry, Marianne, Dorman, Sally, and Terry. And we pray now for those we name in the quiet of our hearts and in our homes. Oh. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It is time in our service where we give thanks for all that God has blessed us with in our lives, with the abundance that we know, and to share that thanks by sharing those gifts, those financial offerings with the ministry here at Chisago Lake Lutheran. I just want to say a word of thanks. It is a gift, truly a gift. Week after week, you continue to support this ministry. And I will say that giving has been up from this time last year, almost every month since March. That says a lot about what God is doing in this time, how even in the distance and in some ways the disconnect we might feel from church, from the space, even from each other, that we are still evolving as a body of Christ, 
that we are still evolving as children of God, as disciples of Christ, that God is still at work in and through us. Thank you for the ways that you continue to give. Thank you for the ways that you continue to open your hearts to what God is doing, what God might be up to. Thank you for your openness to the abundance of Christ in your own life and sharing that with each other and with the ministry here. You're a gift, and for that we give thanks. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Inspire us for service in your name and the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Go forth in peace with the courage of faith. Love God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin. My hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I? of stone, give them hearts for love alone, I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send, here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord, I have heard you calling in the night. And also with you. Go in peace and share the good news. Love your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen.
God, I give you what I can today These scattered ashes that I hid away I lay it all At your feet From the corners of my deepest shame The empty places where I've worn your name Show me the love I say I believe Oh, help me to lay it down Oh, Lord, I lay it down Oh, let this be Where I die Be lifted high It's my kingdom's fall Once and for all Once and for all There is victory in my Savior's loss in the crimson falling from the cross Pour over me Pour over me Yes Oh, let this be Where I die My Lord within be lifted high It's my kingdom's fall Once and for all 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 Once and for all